My name is Jean-Louis Fabiani. I am the director of the Center for Religious Studies here at Central European University. So, let's talk about religion. I would like to ask the students who are joining us here today to please introduce themselves. My name is Anna and I am from Argentina. I am doing my thesis at the Department of Medieval Studies of CEU, where I study the shaping of witchcraft beliefs in the late Middle Ages. My name is Barma Bash, I'm from Hungary and I'm doing my PhD at the Department of History at Central European University. Uh, in the Religious Studies program, my topic is state-church relations in early modern England and Spain. My name is Ngan, I'm from Vietnam, I'm doing my MA in Philosophy at CEU. My interest is in philosophy of religion and early modern philosophy. Um, specific colleague on the ontological argument for God's existence and eternal truth. My name is Abdullah Mirza. I come from the United States. I'm at the History Department where my research focuses on the intersection of religion and political nationalism. Let's start exploring some sites here in Vienna. We are now in the center of the city with cafes, fancy shops, and here stands the play column, the Pestzoile, a religious memorial site. This magnificent sculpture is just one of many examples of Baroque art and architecture throughout the city. A testament to the high Baroque style of the 17th century, it's really a callback to it, the strong Catholic past of Vienna. The city was then coming out of a major pandemic, like us basically, uh, and they, uh, the authorities built this sculpture uh, in order to restore confidence among the population. Now what is interesting is that exactly at the same time the city had also lived through a devastating siege by the Ottoman army, but uh, they built this column in order to commemorate the pandemic. The pandemic, this uh, invisible enemy that could not be vanquished with, uh, uh, with cannons and uh, survival after the pandemic was attributed to a miracle. So uh, all this splendid rhetoric, visual rhetoric of the Baroque era was put at work uh, in order to create an effect of collective healing after these uh, traumatic events. Vienna has a long Catholic uh, tradition, but today it is more uh, of a city of religious diversity, um, home to many religious communities. Uh, here is the splendid Cathedral of St. Nicholas that saw Alexander III has built in 19th century for Russians, Iranians, and other Eastern Orthodox faiths. I mean, the St. Nicholas Cathedral is right in the middle of the diplomatic quarter in Vienna. Um, so I would say that this is practically an embassy in itself. Even when it was built, it was meant to gather Ukrainians, Russians and other people of the Orthodox faith uh, here in Vienna and even today we quite automatically think of a state when we see this cathedral. The Santa Claus monarchies of the Tsar has gone, but church and state have entered a new form of cooperation, which is built on the ideological framework of nationalism. The pocket curious in Moscow is strongly in support of his government. What do you think? Why do nationalists and populists like religion so much? Politics uses religion to include and to exclude, to validate and to attack. There is a striking example for that in neighboring Hungary, which is still one of the homes of CEU. Government narrative there sounds as if the local churches had given the state power to interpret biblical teaching on their behalf. Part of the inauguration ceremony of the current head of state took part in a Calvinist church in the heart of Budapest. Religion is often incredibly powerful because it speaks to everyone, regardless of whether they are at the bottom or at the top. On the one hand, this can be appropriated by national and populist politics, but on the other hand, it can also be a powerful force for good. I heard that Russians and Ukrainians continue praying together despite the present conditions of war. The community and the bishop try to avoid taking political sides, but they have started helping refugees who are fleeing the Russian invasion.
of Ukraine. Religious structures often go their own way. They do not simply replicate the relations of power. We're here in front of another uh, Viennese landmark, the Hundert Wasserhaus. It is an anti-religious statement in some respects because the painter Friedensreich Hundertwasser, who designed this house, wanted to protest against what he called the religion of the straight line and of the right angle that has come to dominate modern architecture, uh, modern art, modern life with its uh, disenchantment. So what he liberates here uh, is uh, the infinite irregularity of nature. I think it is somewhat ironic that uh, in the end, this site became something like a pilgrimage site. Except here, instead of religious art, we can talk about art as religion. So, after these great conversations, I would like to, to pick your brains about what seems to me an essential question today, especially in a globalized world. Um, where are the boundaries, the limits to religious diversity and freedom? Gan. For me, there's no consensus on boundaries to religious freedom. Most of them um, agree on right to erect houses of worship and to freely express religious belief. But discussions on um, blasphemy and missionary activities are still controversial. Religious Studies at CU is in a unique position. Since its founding in 2005, it has managed to develop an MA and PhD certificate accredited by the New York Board of Education. With its strong foundations on Abrahamic traditions and the uh, secular study of religious phenomena, the SCRS certificate allows the students to develop advanced knowledge and useful insights in the study of religion. The religious studies certificate that they carry will stay with them throughout their studies and into their careers. Each religion is an archive of belief and doctrine of texts and ritual that require careful historical and philological research. But religions are also deeply enmeshed in social life. They uh, react to political challenges and uh, they induce emotional and cognitive attitudes. It is the interaction of all these spheres that distinguishes religion. The humanities and social sciences must work together within an interdisciplinary framework. The ACRS provides a comprehensive introduction to the study of religion for MA and PhD students of 11 CEU departments. Our faculty expertise in teaching and research reflects the diversity of this field. With a wealth of prestigious international guest speakers, conferences and workshops, students at the Centre for Religious Studies are truly encouraged and inspired to think outside the box and to widen their horizons. The two mandatory foundations courses are designed to provide students with the foundation to do this, while at the same time the range of multidisciplinary elective courses with 11 partner departments offer students uh, the chance to shape their own experience. And gain quality access to all those departments. The favorable stu student to faculty ratios at CU means that the student can get advice and intellectual support, not just from their um, supervisors, but also from um, experts across the campus. It is also the financial support that CU makes available through religious studies that make the difference. The ACRS incoming student scholarships, the travel grants available for registered students, and the opportunity to organize student conferences and network and work with other universities. All this makes it a truly stellar experience and, and a rewarding time of your academic life. Join us at the Center for Religious Studies at CEU. We are waiting for you.